My name is Stacey Beale, and as many of you now know, I am the O'Connor Family Law High Conflict Relationship Coach. Today, we're going to talk about comments from the peanut gallery. I read a quote from Bill Boulard. He said, opinion is really the lowest form of human knowledge. It requires no accountability and no understanding. The highest form of knowledge is empathy, for it requires us to suspend our egos and live in another's world. Everyone's judgy. Remember, a marriage is more than just the two of you, but you are the two who have to live together. Your family, in a sense, also marries the other spouse and perhaps their family. So many times now we see signs at weddings that say, don't pick a side pick a seat, meaning we're all coming together today as one family. Around the holidays, it can be hard when we're splitting days and having a parenting plan that we're sticking to. Perhaps you and your ex-spouse have accepted this, but now you show up to Thanksgiving and your children are with their other parent. Is this family okay with celebrating on a different day, perhaps the day after or before the holiday, so that children can be part of it as well? Everyone will have an opinion, but as we always say, it's important for friends, families, and coworkers to really try and let you you and your partner do what you feel is right for your children and your family. Don't listen to the opinion of others. We're going to talk about telling your family about the decision of you and your spouse and the divorce. So once you've decided there's no future in your relationship, the first thing you need to do is talk openly and honestly with your partner. Next, we've discussed how you talk to your children and how to tell them. And only after that should you really consider telling others. So telling other people, depending on how open you've been about your marriage with others, will make either telling them about the upcoming divorce easier or harder. If your marriage has been perceived by others as perfect all the time, it may come as a complete shock. Perhaps you vented or cried or even separated for some time. That would make telling others not such a big surprise. You may find it hard to think about how to approach telling others about your separation. It can be easier if you work to talk exactly about what you want to say. You could talk to your partner about this. Agree to a statement. What does that mean? It can help you if you can agree to one statement. This statement shouldn't carry blame. It should keep the reasons for your separation private. This can be difficult, especially because you're likely still feeling angry. In time though, you may be glad you decided on a statement together. Your children may get to hear what's being said to someone and it's not going to help them if it's not the same story that you told them. Their trust will grow in you if there's only one story and you're both telling it. So what are some example statements that you could tell people? You could try using one of the following statements. They're all neutral and will really keep your information private. We just can't work it out. We've both decided that this is best. A lot of things just weren't right. Or you could say, we just want to be good parents and it's time to move on. Telling friends and family, will they be satisfied with a statement like that? You may find that telling family and friends about your separation makes your situation all the more real to you. It can be hard. Hearing yourself say that a marriage has failed or that you're getting a divorce is a hard thing to accept when you are ready to say it. You may find it helpful to think through the these steps though. Speak to your ex. As I said, try to agree with your ex on what you're going to tell and not tell people. This is important because you and your ex may not be in the same place in terms of moving on. Stick with what you know. Try to avoid things that you aren't sure about. Maintain your privacy. Have answers to unwelcomed questions. For example, I'll have to think about that. You don't have to give answers to everything. Again, we're maintaining your privacy. Describe the change. Make things real for people by describing what exactly is gonna be different. For example, maybe you already know somebody's moving out. Consider who are you talking to? Are they your ex's family or friend? How would your ex feel if they could hear what you're saying about them? Stay focused. Think about how people may react to your news. They may not respond as you expect. We'll keep talking about this specifically in today's topic. Think about the future. Future. Think about the kind of relationship you would like in the future with the person you're talking to. It may be helpful for your children if you're not speaking badly about the ex-partner. So we're going to start by how to tell your parents. Lots of time is really devoted to discussing the best ways to tell your children you're getting a divorce. But how do you tell your parents? When we talk about telling people about your divorce, more often than not, it's the children that we really keep in mind. And rightfully so. How the news is broken to them can really make a difference with how they cope with it and set the standard for the family breaking up as easy as possible for them. 
But what happens when it's the children telling their parents that they're getting a divorce? We want to be sure it's the right time. There is time for discussion. Talk privately. Make sure we're not leaving the location to go to a large event right after so that you also have time to be ready to answer their questions. It's never easy to tell someone that your relationship has come to an end. You may feel like a disappointment or that you really let them down, though they are unlikely to see it that way. However, you must tell them about the divorce. I'd advise you do it sooner rather than later. It's best to tell them face to face, but maybe contact them before getting together. Ask them if you can have some time alone with them to discuss an important issue. This is a much better approach than calling them to give them the news or even worse, sending it as a text message. Put a limit on the personal details. Again, to a certain extent, plan what you're going to say to them. They may not need to know all the ins and outs of the breakdown. There may be some slightly personal issues Issues that you want to keep to yourself. I guess it really depends on what type of relationship you have with your parents. For some parents, it will be a complete shock and this will come out of the blue. For others, if you've not openly discussed problems with them previously, they're going to be surprised. They know you and they probably already have an idea that something maybe hasn't been right. Either way, let them absorb and take in what you say. Allow them to ask questions. Don't feel like you have to answer everything. It may be that you don't have the answers at this stage. If you have told them very early on, as you should, arrangements for children, where both parties are going to live in, things like that, probably aren't even settled yet. Demonstrate to them that you have really thought this through. If there are children involved, they of course want to know about them and you can reassure them that you'll always have your child's best interest at heart. You may need more of your parent support in the coming months to support your children, to support you, to have somebody for you to talk to. Your children continuing to spend time with their grandparents really gives them a level of normalcy to these younger children. They also will want to support you likely rather than your spouse. And that's understandable. But if possible, ask them that they openly please don't take sides. Lines like, I told you not to marry them. It's not going to help. It won't help. The best thing that they can do is simply be there for you. Be a sympathetic person that you can talk to. After all, your parents know you better than anyone else. So how soon should you tell others that you're getting a divorce? Divorce is a really difficult decision to make and can be an emotional process. It also is really difficult to determine when you tell others about this decision. Depending on the situation, you may want to tell close family and friends. However, when you tell family and friends or anyone else, that's entirely your decision. As we mentioned, if possible, you should consider consulting your soon-to-be ex-partner and talk about what are you going to say. Maybe some parties you need to break the news together. Maybe you feel that that's the best choice. When deciding whom to tell first, it's important to think about who is going to be most affected by this news. This could include family friends, family members, parents, siblings, even really close friends. It's also important to consider how they might react and if they need time to process the news. Once you've told those closest to you, then you can decide if you're going to make an announcement publicly. After telling your parents and siblings and other close family members, then you can begin telling others. Those relatives that you see every five years at a family reunion, they don't really need to hear from you. You can, but family members that aren't really a regular part of your life don't require a special call, an email, or other communication. They'll probably eventually hear it from someone else. But no matter who you choose to tell first or how soon after making your decision you decide to share it with others, it's important that you take care of yourself emotionally during this time. Seek support from family, friends. Don't be afraid to reach out for other support if you need it. So how do you now tell your friends about your divorce? Well, some friends might have had a front row seat to your marriage and what led up to the divorce. Other friends might feel blindsided by this news. Either way, keep your comments as short and as simple as possible. If friends question and ask for more details, you can always tell them you're still processing everything yourself or that you just want to focus on the future. Discussing your pending divorce will take an emotional toll on you. When you first tell your friends, center the conversation around things you know might change. For example, maybe you're moving into another location. Maybe you're going 
gonna need to get a new phone number or other information that they really should know. You don't need to overshare details or your feelings. If these are mutual friends, really refrain from details that might make them feel they have to choose a side. What about your professional colleagues? Well, unless your spouse socializes with your coworkers or your work involves you and your spouse as a couple, there may be no reason to formally even tell your coworkers. Human resources, you may need to tell them because they might need to change your address or withholding information from your taxes. Perhaps you want to tell your boss if you might need to adjust your work schedule to handle the legal aspects of the divorce. Let them know the divorce will have little impact as possible on your work. And if you plan on telling your colleagues about the divorce, make sure you tell your boss first so that you can protect the relationship between yourself and them. Ultimately, deciding whether to tell co-workers about a divorce is a personal choice and should be based on what's going to make you feel the most comfortable. So how about some tips to help you guide that conversation? Again, only share what you're comfortable sharing. It's not required that you tell your boss or your co-workers and you don't need to get into a lot of detailed or share personal information. Focus on how is this divorce going to impact me at work. You can simply state to them you want to be transparent about the proceedings or meetings with a lawyer. It might require you to answer more calls frequently, leave early, etc. That's all you really have to tell them. Avoid placing blame on your divorce of your work performance. While your divorce is emotional and can impact your mental health, you shouldn't use your divorce as an excuse for poor performance or failure to meet expectations. You could consider telling your children's teacher, coaches, other key adults in their lives. Knowing about the divorce will really help them understand a change in your child's behavior or if their grades are falling. Ask these adults to let you know if they notice anything changing in your children. When you're telling them, think of these strategies. Your family and others in your life can also be emotionally and literally affected by divorce, which is why it's really important to approach this conversation compassionately and respectfully. Be diplomatic. If you're talking with people still close to the other party, like mutual friends or your in-laws, be diplomatic. Avoid being disrespectful to the other party. What you can say can get back to your spouse, which can impact both of you. If you want to remain in contact with these mutual friends or any in-laws, you should really set up some boundaries and really consider what's being discussed. Be honest. You shouldn't feel pressured to overshare or explain why you're getting a divorce. You can share what you're comfortable with others knowing, but you do not even have to explain what led to the divorce if you don't want to. Just be honest. Be prepared to set boundaries. You know what you can handle and what you're willing to discuss. You also shouldn't feel that you need to deflect the conversation in any way. You don't need their unwanted advice or negativity. Ask people not to share your information on social Social media. Social media can negatively impact so many aspects of your divorce. How they can support you. When you announce a divorce, you can share what you know about your case and the next steps. This information will help you lead into how you might need help with childcare or other matters while your divorce is going through the process. We're hearing what we should and shouldn't share, but how do you find the courage to really get into these difficult conversations? We all have courage. Rather than acquiring it, we just need to cultivate it. Just like an athlete strengthens their muscles and stretches before they're ready to run a marathon, the more we practice becoming courageous, the easier it's going to be. A courageous conversation means really speaking from the heart. Be sensitive to the other person and be willing to listen. All of these conversations take courage. They take guts. These steps will really help you reach out behind that comfort zone and have a good conversation. Dig deep. Access your courage. Look back at all the times in your life when you had to show strength. Identify how did that help and what strategies did you use that you could apply to your current situation. Think about this. What are your fears? Take a closer look. Why are you feeling so anxious? This is your life. Be specific. Identify what the fear is. Become aware of how these feels might become smaller and understand them. Weigh it up. Think through the risks and benefits of having the conversation versus staying silent. Let yourself really sleep on the decision. Are you going to talk or are you not? Build a bridge. Meet the people where they are and the emotions that they bring during this conversation. Truly let your heart speak. 
Take some quiet time to go within your own heart. Hear what the courageous part of yourself has to say and really listen to this voice inside of you. Take action. What is the next step? Set a deadline on when you're going to have these conversations and do it. Ask someone that you talk to to check in with you and make sure they've held you accountable. So now we've had these not so easy conversations with friends, families, coworkers, coaches, maybe teachers, anyone else that's involved with your family. They may or may not have given you their opinion, though you likely didn't ask for it. So what are some techniques to use to bounce back after and during these really difficult conversations? There are times when difficult conversation is really hard to avoid, even if it makes us feel nervous or stressed and wanting to run in the other direction. The thing is, avoiding it isn't going to help. If you tackle a conversation in the right way, it can help the other person understand your feelings and beliefs and maybe improve the situation or relationship. So let's talk about some tips to help you get that difficult conversation out on the right foot. We've now discovered how to get the courage to do it. We've talked to ourselves. We've listened to our heart. We know what we're going to do, but how do we start them on the right foot? Listen up. When the other person is talking, listen to what they're saying. Try to understand the point of view. Ask them questions. Don't talk over them. You've shared. Now let them share their feelings too. Be clear about how you feel and what you want. A big part of tackling these difficult conversations is communicating clearly, directly, and effectively. Try planning again beforehand what you want to say so that your nerves and emotions don't get the best of you. Let's talk about how you feel and why. Use I statements. Don't place blame. I feel really upset. I feel this. We're not talking about placing blame on anybody else. Describe what you want from this discussion. It might be clear that you're not looking for their opinion. You just need to tell them about about it. Look at the issue from their perspective. It can be easy to get caught up on how we're feeling, especially if you've been hurt or you're feeling strange about this conversation. But before you jump to any conclusions, really try to put yourself in their shoes and also see the situation from their perspective. If things in the conversation aren't going as you planned, it's okay to take a break. Sometimes you can do everything you can to have that constructive talk with somebody, but if they're not willing to do the same, it's likely not going to go anywhere. Agree to disagree. Not all conversations like this are going to have a happy ending. There'll be some people, situations, or behaviors that you just can't talk through, and that's okay. Agree to disagree. It doesn't mean that you agree with their perspective. You need to protect yourself and decide what battle is worth the fight. Lastly, look after yourself. These difficult conversations can really sometimes get a bit heated as people feel emotional or hurt, angry, or confused. Taking care of yourself is something you really need to be proud of. It takes courage. Each time you overcome this nervousness and do it, you'll build your skills and confidence. The first person you talk to about this divorce, it's going to be hard. It's going to be emotional. The more you talk and have open conversations, the easier these conversations are truly going to get. Empathy and understanding and making managing these external opinions that people are going to have. We've always been told everybody has an opinion. What is empathy? So that's when you really have the ability to see things from somebody else's perspective and really feel their emotions. So why is that important? This is about us, right? But empathy is an important role to play in your life. First, it can really strengthen your bond with the person that you're interacting with as you try to have them understand you. They're more likely to take time to empathize with you as well. This will really deepen your relationship and promote that feeling of connection that we all are desiring. This is where we need that strong social support network, where we tend to have somebody who helps us increase our happiness because empathy leads to better relationships, which means it's a key component to having us build a more satisfying life. It can also help us guide decision making in social situations. Empathy can really help you decide the wisest course of action. If your spouse seems stressed out from work, that's when you can interfere and take on more responsibility normally. That's what a good example of empathy is. It helps you reduce burnout. It helps you diffuse conflict. That's what we're looking for. How do we navigate these changing social networks? Not necessarily social media, but the networks that you had. When a divorce happens, you don't just lose the person that you were married to. You're going to likely lose much more. And often that includes restructuring your friends and your family and that supportive network and your social community. So rebuilding community and friendship after your world is collapsing due to divorce is really overwhelming and frustrating. The people you relied on may no longer be there. And if they are, it might feel awkward. Places 
as you felt safe in your community, you might no longer feel safe, which is why sometimes it's easier to walk away and let friendships come to an end when you're going through divorce, though we don't want you to have to do that. Although you might feel like the hole inside of you is growing as you lose relationships through the divorce process. The fear of losing your friends when you decide that getting divorced is a real fear and one that sometimes we don't think about as we're navigating the divorce and trying to rebuild our lives. But what I've learned and try to help clients like you all understand is any major change or transition in our lives comes with loss. We lose friends, aspects of ourselves, and a community we once relied on. So let me be transparent here. You will likely lose some people that you called friends and families when you were going through a divorce, regardless of how long you've been in each other's lives or what you've been through together. Not everyone is going to stay. It's sad. You will absolutely mourn the loss of these relationships and ones that remain will probably transform into what type of relationship? Well, only time will tell. However, I do know this. You're going to be okay. If not today, eventually. Building new friendships and communities like healing takes time and it happens in layers. It happens in steps. So here's the thing about losing friendships and support networks. While it's sad, it is an incredible opportunity for growth. An opportunity to help create something more meaningful and amazing than maybe you had before. So divorce is truly a state of deconstruction and reconstruction. So be gentle with yourself. Lean on your friends and family that you feel safe with. Open up to new opportunities and give yourself the space you need to heal. And I might add, I recommend taking up a new hobby because learning a new skill really allows you to focus your mind on something outside of the divorce and any changes that you're experiencing, even if it provides a temporary ease to some of the pain that you're experiencing. It will help. Let's remember why we as humans give unsolicited advice anyway. We think we're being helpful. We want to get someone to do or say what we think is right. We think we have the answers and know more than others. And lastly, we're really worried about a loved one and we feel powerless. Since we don't know what to say or what to do, we often give that unsolicited advice and become a peanut gallery. Respond to that peanut gallery by saying certain things. I know you mean well, but I'm not looking for advice. And maybe you simply just need a hug. Right now, I just want to vent. I'm not looking for solutions. The most helpful thing you can do is just sit with me and listen. I appreciate your idea, but I want to figure this out on my own. I know you care about me, but I'll let you know when I need your help. This just doesn't feel like the right approach for me. Or you can say, that's not something I want to discuss right now. What I personally want to tell you is keep being bravely you. I hope that you enjoyed today's discussion. If I didn't get to answer any questions that you had or you'd like to speak with me further, please visit me at www.familylawma.com. Have a great day.